Hi, I'm Kaizen, and today we're going to be talking about the best ways to counter stone shapers. This video will go over general tips, techniques that can be used on any builds and playstyle, as well as tips for each class, rune usage, and what talents are best to use. I timestamped everything in the description box down below if you want to skip around. I didn't want to make this video too long, so in the near future I'll be doing video analysis of me facing stone shapers. It'll include a lot of the general tips and some of the things I say in class tips as well. Also, I'll be doing anti or how to counter guides for all classes, so be sure to subscribe to check those out. That's enough of me speaking, let's get into the video. For general tips, I would like to talk about sorcery canceling. You can manipulate how you fall without using any mana by holding down your sorcery input and by pressing your one of your primary inputs to cancel your sorcery. This can throw off a stone shaper's timing with them either missing you completely or leaving them spamming their primary attacks till they drain out their mana. It's a great opportunity for you to take some shots if you see them recharging their mana. Just be careful not to be too greedy because all it takes is one or two hits from a stone gauntlet to change the tide of any battle. The next thing I want to talk about is kiting, which basically means to bait someone into a favorable position. With stone shapers, you want them to either stay on the ground while you're on a higher elevated surface, where their shockwaves cannot hit you, or constantly change elevation. You can do this by forcing them to chase you and mimic your movements. During the times when they're the ones changing elevation, it will be a great opportunity for you to hit them a few times and chip away at their HP. Believe it or not, stone shapers are weakest during their early game. Their attacks are delayed and slow down whenever they're jumping be before an attack. This is because they do not have bedrock. This also applies to whenever you see someone using a stone gauntlet offhand. So use this knowledge whenever kiting to get off more damage when changing elevation. Later on in the video, I'll go over a great counter to their early game stone skin, where they get more armor by just smashing the ground. Next tip that I want to give out is that in-game visual cues can be misleading. Pay attention to where stone can travel and where it cannot. A lot of this will be trial and error since their shockwaves can go through practically everything. Brick fences, upstairs, around mountains, my love life. It's always best to be on a service that's completely disconnected from where you are and the other player is standing either vertically or horizontal. Lastly, for general tips, I want to say play smart and don't be greedy. As mentioned before, all it takes is one or two hits from a shockwave or border to change the tide of any battle. You will get hit your first couple of times when trying to outduel a stone shaper using these methods. But when it does happen, it is important to stay calm and keep chipping away at their HP. The calmer player typically wins their engagements. If you can stay composed and continue to chip away their HP, they will either keep aggroing you and make a mistake where you can finish them off, or run away where you either can chase or use that as an opportunity to disengage as well and heal up. Next I will want to talk about general rune usage. Practically the best runes to use against stone shapers are dash or spring step. Both are great for staying in the air and making players second guess where you're going to land next. You can hold your backpedal input with dash to create a floating effect and stay longer in the air. This is great for the times when you run out of mana but still want to stay in the air or make a move to dodge an attack. Both really have low cooldown times and if you pair dash with runic fluency you can potentially stay in the air the whole match depending on your talents, class, and mana management skills. Flight and Featherfall can achieve similar results, but they leave you more vulnerable due to them being more of a macro movement room instead of a micro movement room like Dash and Spring Step. You can cancel them in mid-use, but their long recharge time means you'll have to find some other way to dance around stone shapers or stone users. Teleport is nice for changing elevation and can confuse player where you're going if you can change where you're facing before you teleport. The problems with teleport are invalid targeting and its slight animation delay, both of which is where stone shapers could take advantage of and deal significant damage on you. 
Invis can be useful, but due to Stone Shaper's huge hitbox, they can just randomly spam their shockwaves, which can hit and reveal you pretty easily. So pick your moments of invisibility wisely. Wolf's Blood against Stone Shapers isn't the best option, and I'm kind of tempted to rank it last. But it can be useful against those Invis Stone Shapers, because apparently that's a thing now. And I'll briefly go over certain talents when dealing with Stone Shapers. For the Mind Talent, the probably the best one to use is Runic Fluency. As mentioned before, pair this well with movement runes such as Spring Step or Dash and we can potentially stay in the air or trick your opponents for a very long time due to their low cooldown. Harmony can also protect you from potential offhand abilities such as stuns from lightning or freezes from frost. It can also slightly reduce the huge damage that stone is able to dish out. Focus mana is kind of sketchy because you will most likely be using most of your mana to move around or stay in the air. But if you think you can pull off the added damage with focus mana, then go for it. Now for the body talents. Think of dexterity as training wheels for mana management. It reduces the cost of levitation, so you can stay up in the air even longer, which gives you the ability to dodge Stone Shaper's attacks. Fever is definitely one of the most used body talents out in the game by competitive players. Use this to out DPS Stone Shapers depending on what class you're using. Scavenging is mainly useful in solos and duels but can also come handy in trios. Chances are you will take a lot of damage whether you're new or old just because of Stone's ridiculously huge hitbox and inconsistent terrain patterns. But after winning a battle, it's nice to recuperate some of that lost HP, especially in this third party royale that we're playing. Fortitude can also come in clutch for those mindless moments you make a mistake, since it can absorb one direct hit. And also good against those envious stone shapers, because they are a thing, believe it or not. Now for the spirit category, the only two talents that really matter are recovery and thirsty. Recovery lets you regenerate 50% of damage taken over time, and Thirsty increases your consumption speed of potions and shards. And these also affect your nearby teammates when you're running Thirsty, which is why I recommend at least one person running Thirsty in either a duos or a trios. Vital Stone can come in handy every now and then just because you could levitate while you're immune for 4 seconds, but at the end of the day, it's just a meme. <laughs> now on to class tips. In my opinion, both Tempest and Toxicologist are the best classes to deal against Stone Shapers. We'll first start off with Tempest. As a Tempest, you will primarily want to use your Wind Gauntlet as a means of mobility, and even use it as a means to stay in the air indefinitely with Wind Jump and Updraft. If you pair Updraft, with dash and wind jump, you can even launch yourself even higher into the air. You can also deal damage while wind jumping above their heads. But using your offhand may be a better choice, especially if you have squall unlocked. Pay attention to your mana though, and use your movement runes if you run out. Toxicologists are a nice counter to stone because they can cover the area with their puddles. This platoon effect will limit a stone shaper's ground mobility. Also, the toxic puddles can extend a dragonfire's area effect. So every second a person is in this giant green fire, it'll add on an extra 20 damage, which really punishes players who stay on the ground. Toxicologists also have corrosion, which is an easy counter to the shield regeneration. This would cause stone shapers that constantly have their armor broken and potentially annoy the hell out of them as well. Lastly, the best part about Tox is that they can deal high burst damage at a close range. Tie this in with Vanishing Mist and Outbreak and you'll be a more deadly close range player than any stone shaper.
You can also bounce using your toxic clouds. Just be wary of fire because it can backfire and it costs you the engagement. Pyro is a great mid-range gauntlet you can use to chip away damage quickly as well. Just be aware that stone combos really well with fire. They can leave fire streaks through your fire puddles and walls which can put damage back onto you. This is also referred to as chariots of fire. The same applies to their boulders as well. So just be wary of these elemental combinations. You can also use Firefly for added aerial movement. However, there will be times where a shockwave will still hit you even if you enter at the tip top of your firewall. Conduit is also a great counter to stone as well. Its drawbacks come from when firing. Most people's mobility are typically hindered because of the way they use Conduit. They typically either move a lot and miss a lot of their shots, or they strafe just a little bit and or they stand still while firing. This can be a major drawback because of Stone Shaper's massive hitbox with both their shockwaves and boulders. This limit of mobility makes your movements easy to read and even if they miss directly, the hitbox will still hurt a lot, whether it is a boulder or a shockwave. Another pro to con using Conduit is its second skill, Overload, which gives you an extra rune charge, which can be used with dash and other runes as mentioned before. This gives you added flexibility when making your builds or using your runes. Frostborn can also be a great counter to stone because it can deal damage from a distance. It is also potentially the worst class to go up against stone users. Use flash freeze, a giant boulder can come at you for big damage. Is that a nice little ice trail near you? Well it won't be after a stone user breaks it and potentially freezes you. Try shooting them directly head on, you'll open the door for a huge ice cube smacking you in the forehead for damage and freezing you. In essence, there's a lot you have to take into account when using the Frostborn class and the Frost Gauntlet when playing against stone. So that's the end of the video. Be sure to subscribe and like if you want more of this content. I'm also free in my Discord if you have any questions. King Kaizen out, y'all have a nice one.